Happy Saturday. Thank you for joining the podcast. My name is Masinga Makao. This is the Masinga Podcast Show. Salamu to Kidogo. <laughs> Only the real ones understand that one. I would like by sending special love and condolences to all of us who've lost loved ones during the reject finance bill protest. I know this is tough. It's been tough and trying for all of us. It's been triggering. Um, you know, some of us like me, I go back, I uh, goes way back to 207 where I lost, um, my favorite cousin this is the man who told me so many things about being a man um you know in the village things like being outstanding and walking in the garden or looking out after the goats and walking in the field these are the things which sort of elevate your status as a little man or as a young man and a teenager and this is the man who walked with me was so patient so caring is the first man i had to talk about girls and such things and he was banned they banned him into it was crazy uh during the post election balance so this was triggering this was it was uh, it's crazy uh i don't know i i don't have the words i know it's not been easy um um boy i i don't know i'm trying to get the right words it's been emotional uh it's been painful people have lost their loved ones people have been injured why we're just asking the police have some humanity. Uh, don't kill people who are not doing anything wrong. They're just peaceful protesters. Please do not kill them. You're calling the president and the leadership uh, categorically in charge. Call out the president. Tell him, hey, give an order. Tell the police to stop killing people. We haven't heard him say that. That's so interesting. Like during this time when people are being shot, he has not said it like that specifically. There are certain times call for, certain times or different times call for different response and this one i feel like it has to be very specific and clear hey stop killing kenyans this is wrong we haven't heard that that's that's crazy that shows you the kind of leader we have um i'm calling out the church leaders who've allowed this man to preach in your churches um i'm calling out on yes all the bishops and the archbishops call out that is wrong you have to do it right because you are the ones who entertain the man and brought him to your pulpit so you know this you know what they say that the apology should be as loud as this as the disrespect that is what i think about this thing that you guys the same way you were loud endorsing him and praising him and praying for him in the churches and in these conference meetings you all should be loud the same way calling him out yes I think that will be in order, right? So we continue to pray um, for everyone, for the country. Um, we just want justice and the right thing um, to be done. And, and just moving on really from this tough time, um, as you can see, I did not even podcast for the last two days like I usually do uh, in the week two times, just in, in, in respect of those of who've died and those who are hurting and lost their loved ones uh, in respect of the country just hurting and and people going through a difficult time people are triggered people are triggered this finance bill has triggered kenyans people are tired they've been triggered and the young people feel like no one is listening to them like no one uh, no one is listening you know we just want a change we just want a change things have to be done differently yeah, so it's this country isn't about one person. It's bigger than one person. It's bigger than one person. Yes, you, you know when I was young in the dating game, um, when I would have an issue with the person I was dating, she would tell me, "I think you're making it about you, but it's not. It shouldn't be about you. It's about both of us, right? So don't make it about you, right? It's it shouldn't be about one person." It's about the entire country, the 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 the, the young people, uh, the future of the country. Uh, I have a very a strong passion for young people. The, man, it's politics is isn't my space, and you, and you can tell how bad it is if you have my finger here commanding uh, on politics and such things. And so moving on, um, just something which has been um, really in my heart um for the last couple of days um there's a day i was i was triggered and i felt that a little anxiety and concern and in that moment of panic i just prayed i told god i am yours jesus you're mine and i'm yours everywhere i step into anywhere i'm at you're there with me i'm yours i'm yours in jesus name
and that helped me to release uh, the fear and anxiety i think i think we need to be more we need to be more cautious more conscious of 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 the presence of god that is with us that he never leaves us even in those difficult trying times i know right now it doesn't make sense to a lot of you especially the ones who've lost their loved ones someone you know went to protest peacefully and the next minute is shot and is dead that's tough i lost a loved one too i lost my pops we were you know i spoke with the man like yesterday and then the following day the man was gone i know our instant death it's a sting it's too painful i do know it um you know you can you, you know if you're affected in a way you can reach out in a dm you know we can talk about it we, we can we can pray about it i'll offer i listen um I, Man, grief is usually tough, and my heart really goes out to those who've been broken, uh, or have been broken right now, and are going through this season. So, in that moment where the fear was building up and the anxiety, I was just reminding myself that God, I belong to you. You've got my back. You're watching over me. You're watching over me. Uh, yesterday, I was coming to work, and the other side of the road, there were people who had closed the road with pangas. You, you don't know what they're going to do. I don't know what they've done. And I'm not far from that road. And man, it was it was just crazy. Uh, it's just crazy how just it was, it was just something small. And it's just erupted, ballooned into this big thing. So be on the lookout, uh, walking groups, uh, you know, the, the bosses, people at work, be considerate. Some of these people are not faking. Some of them, they cannot travel to work um, because they're scared. Of going to town, I feel like even now the harassment of the police has gone higher. Hey, hey, you, you, you've hadn't done nothing. I've, I've never understood that. Is there a law that says you should be arrested? Maybe someone needs to fill me in on this one. Should you be arrested if you don't have a na national ID when you're walking in town? There is a law that you're supposed to be arrested. I, I need to know that one. It's happened to me a couple of times, and man, it's it's never it's not fun at all. Um. So, so in that moment where I was feeling this, the trigger, and and the pain, and and the tears, I just kept, I just talk out. I'm yours, Jesus. I belong to you. I belong. And this video goes out to anyone who's broken, anyone who's sad, and is the, the burden is heavy in your heart. Uh, I don't know what you're dealing with. Could be pain. Uh, could be you're broke. Being broke and lack of money can really. Uh, tear someone apart it's true and i don't know if you're going through a breakup or loss of a loved one or the current state of the matter in kenya are breaking your heart or things at work or that promotion you feel like some someone is favored and you're not favored um well you and you put in the work and it just doesn't seem to work um uh, and the burden is just heavy in your heart you, you know I, i'm just praying with you tonight and i'm just encouraging you um what i've done um i just told god today that i release all those burdens because i've been having a few burdens the last couple of days which have been sitting heavy in my heart um and i won't lie my the father's day was a, was a huge trigger it started on friday that that was a that was like a huge trigger i don't know where it came from and i, I just feel that heaviness and 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 then now going into this manda mano and all of it uh, so anyone who's feeling the heaviness in your heart and man you know i pray that you know you will release it i know you feel justified to feel angry and, and sad um but, but just release it um there's always something higher and bigger than that i know that for sure that you're more than this that is what i was telling myself and i was telling my team that you're more than this than this moment right here where you're feeling defeated, now where your work performance isn't where it's supposed to be, where your money isn't making sense, where your relationship, your family, your background, uh, the political situation, where things are not working and you're feeling broken and crushed and sad. I just came you know, through this podcast to tell you that, you know, that little, that messed up, God has a way of making it to be glorious. He made uh, the little fish and, and the bread to be enough. Mm -hmm. He makes the sick to be healed. And even through the season uh, where you've lost someone, it gives you the understanding for that particular season uh, somehow and you will be okay, uh, though it is really tough. So if you're there and you're just the, the burden is sitting heavy in your heart and the pain and the confusion, um, I told my team today that um, just, just release it, release it. 
And that thing where we allow numbers, we allow relationship status, bank statement, debt, uh, work performance, your boss, your family, your ex, to give us a meaning, we just have to release and cast them all out. All those cares and concerns, he says, casting them out to Jesus. Just release them out, release all of them. These things that you've been holding on to faithfully and religiously and, and, and rightfully so. Some of us, I understand, I understand pain, right? Just feel, just feel this. Them. There's something bigger. There's something bigger than this. I really love the story of the um, the Samaritan woman who was already living in shame and guilt and condemnation. She, she, she was, you know, historically, uh, even where I come from, people don't usually fetch water at noon. The Bible says Jesus at noon time he was there at the well waiting for her. Where I come from at noon. No, and women actually go to fetch water in groups in the morning or in the evening when the sun isn't too hot. And I can think geographically where Israel is at, it's super hot uh, at noon. So this woman, she's away from everyone. She's just living in shame. And she's she feels like justified to live in like a cone where she's been shamed by society, by what she's done and failed marriages. And then she meets a man who doesn't care about her. Who is not phased or shocked by that? Boy, like, yo, there's something bigger than this. That like you're more than this. You're more than the breakup, more than the failed marriage, more than the failed relationship, more than the divorce, more than the abortion, the abortions, the breakup, the whatever thing. You're more than that. And he's like showing this woman, ah, he's he or two. <laughs> he, yeah. You too, it was not moved by that. That's small. You're so beautiful, so blessed by God to be defined by those things, by these things, to allow these things to give you meaning, to give you life. You're so powerful. If you can just open your eyes and see how powerful you are because of him, because remember, he is our strength, right? He's given us strength. He's the one who gives us salvation. That is, I was telling him that the, you're my light. Right in my finances, you're my light. In my family, my future, right in my body, you're my light. And remember, is the light that darkness cannot comprehend. Mm -hmm. This light, my God, darkness cannot comprehend. Darkness cannot stand a chance. So anybody who's feeling defeated and and broken and sad and, and suicidal. I know the triggers. I know how this thing works. I've been suicidal before. I've been depressed. I've been in that dark corner. I've been in that dark place. And, and I, you feel justified to be there. I just want to remind you, friend, that you're blessed. You're loved by God. And there's a higher way than that. There's something bigger than that. You're more than this. Look at the prodigal son. Who really the reason why he went back to the father, if you read the scripture, is because of the food. Like, look at me here suffering, eating with pigs. And in my father's house, there's enough for the workers. Food motivated him. But what happened when he went there? He got even more than that. He got more than that. God, look at the people who were brought to Jesus. They were sick. And then you tell them, your sins are forgiven. They would get more than what they wanted. I've had testimonies. People would all tell, all tell God, God, please give me a house. Give me a wife. And the answer they got was more than what they wanted. I remember there was a time I was budgeting to buy something for 40000 And someone, hey, Alex, if you're watching this, blessed with something bigger and better than for 84000 Like, yo, chukwe yoniyako. Man, how amazing is our God? He's so amazing. So you, you're there. You're thinking that money is the problem. Kidogo money is the problem. Having a husband is the thing that will make your life work. But God is like, my son, open your eyes. Eh? Getting a wife is what you you now finally feel like. Now I'm blessed. There is more to life than that. There's more to life than that. There is more to life than that. You in marriage, you haven't gotten a baby. You know when you go to Christ, when you receive His righteousness, bro, it show you a lot. He says that he, he sets up a table for your enemies. And what that really means is that what, what is your enemy? Is it fear? Is it insecurity? There is a word. There is there is a light. That, that that enemy, that darkness cannot stand that light. There's a powerful light where that darkness, that 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 feeling needy and defeated, mm -hmm, where, where you always feel like your entire life you've always been begging for love and for people to understand you. So you're depressed and confused little kid. 
there is a table set for that where, where they've been a divorce and a failed marriage because marriage and relationships these are areas where people are attacked a lot the most and we have and we have and someone and people's self-esteem um and uh and insecurities tend to to come from that place because someone was unloved by their father or because how their father related with them but because how the, well, there's something they were taught by their mother or their teacher you know it was some sort of relationship and it sort of ended up affecting them how they think how they behave so my friend i tell you whatever it is he says he sets up a table yes in front of your enemy what is the enemy is it lack of money just come to him and he'll show you it, it, you know when he says come to me that you you that you're carrying heavy buttons I, I my yoke is light it's so light abraham he wanted a son but god ended up giving he gave him righteousness you think you, you thought the thing that okay, when you get a baby you'll be you're done you're now you're good there's so much there's so much more than that he gave him righteousness mm -hmm. you know they're thinking when i get the promotion now that's it umifika when i get a job where they pay me a million hey i'm making probably 50, what, they, what do they say if you're not making two fifty thousand dollars in a year <laughs> you're not really working hard i man, this standards there <laughs> who comes up with these things mm -hmm. well, i don't know what this whatever the standards are but 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 whatever it is you think that's what is going to leverage you and put you on <laughs> and the father is like you are so much more than this you're so much more than this like that woman that woman was caught in sin she was caught in sin uh, during the sin of adultery and they wanted to stone her mm -hmm. and the bible says Jesus christ was like uh, who are those who condemn you where are they because i don't you, you know it's like it's showing her you've seen that thing you're learning to, it's so small to allow your entire life to evolve around it to allow your entire life to evolve around that one relationship that didn't work that one boss that didn't do you didn't do you right or that one mistake you committed oh all those many he says even if your sins are red as scar scarlet he washes them to white as snow it doesn't matter how, how red and many and how much they are if that grammar makes sense Ah, when it comes to him, it is a fountain of a grace that is overflowing. It is a fountain of a grace. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, that's just just like saying she does see pesa, because I've known people who've gotten the money and they're like, oh, is that all there is? They're not happy. It wasn't really about the the money. It's about you having a new identity that is found in Christ. Oh man, Money is just an addition relationship is an addition having a baby is an addition promote is an seek ye first the kingdom and all of these things will be added to you they become an addition they, they are no longer priority you're not living for those things he makes a way to make those things serve you he's a good father right so i want whatever you are in your situation in your place in your room blah blah you're living in a single room i remember there's a time i was living in a single room the shared bathroom oh man mm, just getting emotional gonna go because it, it was i enjoyed it thoroughly and if i the only mistake i feel like i did if i was to go back i think i would make sure that i enjoy it even more and not feel like i'm not doing well because i'm leaving apple in that single bed sitter uh bed there i vow and um, and then the girls liked me even where your boy have always <laughs> your boy has always had game <laughs> even in those times and, and i'm thankful for the people who've walked with me and just discovered this light of christ where darkness cannot stand we are that thing where those things define me and give me a meaning and make me feel defeated. They they no longer define me anymore. Man. Ah. So my little uko. Yeah, I'd be living in a nice house, wide, five bedroom houses, living kama kuna kitu kuna kubother living you don't have a lot, why you probably the food you don't like what you're having. Whatever you are, I just I just want you to know that you're loved and you're special and that god is for you i know religion has lied that you have to earn his love and that you have to look a certain way for god to move but that's a lie god moved before anyone got their act right jesus came without anyone praying for him i want you to know that you're very special you're handsome you're beautiful you're powerful you're the child of god man that that thing of where you confess christ believing that he died and resurrected 
and believing in his righteousness bro now you 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 know you're born again of the seed of Christ and Christ is the incorruptible seed the one that is undefeated yeah so those things i pray that you list them those those things that have been giving you meaning that you've been holding on to i pray, I pray that you list them even as you're watching and listening to this and just really finishing up um there's a what is it hmm, okay that, that's that's for next time i was telling myself that in this place where i'm at there is no contest there is no competition here where that i know that i'm i've accepted and believed in the righteousness of christ in his death and the resurrection there is no contest here those things that used to give me meaning and sort of fight for my attention to give me a meaning to put me down insecurities how i look like my money my age what i have what i don't have there is no contest here i belong to jesus the the, the victory is guaranteed here and those things they cannot define me there is no contest here there's no competition there is no contest in this zone that's that's where i want you all to get in and where by the way it's not you even the one doing the job is the one doing the job remember he is the good shepherd he leads the way he leads the way is the good shepherd in this zone in this place there is no contest there is no competition a break up here will not drive me nuts will hurt kid or go but it won't drive me nuts money me having a lot of money pride will not pride will not take because they, they are my heart i have a life of a flowing of christ so a lot of money little money having much or little having a certain car not a car riding the bus having not sleeping in the car, whatever it, there is there right there i belong to christ and these things they cannot steal me they cannot steal me to give a meaning anymore it says where you are nothing can snatch you away from the father's arms nothing can snatch snatch me from my heart no lack of money nothing my, and I, this is the thing that kept me sane and going when i lost my pops because i know how much grief can drive someone crazy i know trust me this is it in this place there is no contest nope not having a wife not having kids that one will co competing to my knee, I, to that i can feel inferior and small and i'm not good enough and i'm i'm horrible and i'm not blessed uh, there is no contest here here i'm fully known fully accepted and fully loved by jesus that my lot is secure in christ that my inheritance is good in christ jesus period there is no contest here na even do to me maliza finish kumalo hey <laughs> subscribe like share comment and see you for the next one